Joining me now to discuss this day is Health Coordinator Nigeria Red Cross Society in Delta State, Joseph Odua. Good to have you join us. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So, um, as a country, we used to collect about 60,000 units of blood annually. Um, now, the figures have, has, has, figures have dropped drastically. To, um, in 2019, I think we collected about 25,000 units of blood. A lot of people do not understand the concept of blood shortage and why they should donate blood. So, um, for people like that, talk to us about the, how, how critical and important it is um, to donate blood. Yes, um, all over the world, we understand that we have um, emergencies every day. These emergencies could be accidents, it could be because of surgery, it could be because of a severe loss of blood. So because of that, people's lives are always at risk or in danger. And when there are no blood available to donate to such persons, we could lose those persons. So that's why it's very important to keep the drive for blood donation. And it's very good that we, we with the theme of this year, we are making sure that Nothing is going to stop us to make sure that bloods are donated frequently everywhere across the country to make sure that wherever blood is needed, people are going to get it readily available and of no cost as well because Nigerian Red Cross Society is a voluntary aid humanitarian organization. The services that we render are of no cost. Especially now that we are dealing with um, the, the coronavirus pandemic, talk to us about how the response has been so far in the year. Um, you have, you have. I'm very sure you see people coming in and out to donate blood. How's the response been? Are we doing better now in terms of blood donation? Yes, um, because of the COVID-19, people have been very skeptical. They don't want to, uh, you know, break the COVID-19 protocols, like observing physical distancing and making sure they you know, abstain from anything that's going to occasion the spread. But, well, from, from what we've seen so far, people have still been trying to donate blood at the health facilities where we use for do blood donation. People come out. As I'm talking to you right now, we are at Federal Medical Center at Saba in Delta State, where we are running a blood um, donation campaign. Um, outside from the office where I am now, there are over 50 persons who are donating blood presently. And we're making sure that we're still observing the COVID-19 protocols and making sure that people donate. So it's been encouraging because ordinarily you respect that people wouldn't come out because of COVID-19. But people are out there. They know that there is need for them to donate blood because people need this blood on a daily basis. People go out, they don't know what to expect. And then before you know it, it's an accident situation or people are sick and they need blood to be donated to them. Or people who go for surgery. So the need for blood is very, very important because the need is out there and it needs to be filled. So people are out there trying to make sure that it's a better place for everyone to be. So there are people who, who want to donate blood, but are not sure if they can. So talk to us about um, who can donate blood um, and, and how often should people donate blood? Yes, first of all, for people who want to donate blood, the first thing to consider is the consent. People who want to donate blood have to be about 18 years because that's when you have the right, the legal right to give consent to donate blood. Then for those persons who are below 18 years of age, their consent has to be gotten from either the parent or the ward. Then the next thing to consider is, um, let's say the, the, the sex of the, of the blood donor. Men are free and able to donate blood at any point in time, all, all factors being considered. But for women, if a woman is going to donate blood, we take the cost to if she's menstruating or if she, she's done with a menstrual period, then if she's pregnant also, she can't donate because she's going to be in need of that blood. Then we also take cognizance to the body weight of the blood donor. If the body weight is below 50 kg, that person will not be allowed to donate because definitely it's not going to move up for that person after donating. Then also people who have um, signs of flu like coughing, sneezing, they are not allowed to donate. They are supposed to get well before they can be allowed to donate. Then also if you have tattooed your skin or any engravement on your skin, you are supposed to observe a period of 12 months before you will be allowed to donate. So you don't pass on any impurity or any infection whatsoever. So those are the factors that we consider before anybody can donate blood. Then also, if you have taken a vaccine like um, the mumps vaccine or COVID-19 vaccine or a vaccine for yellow fever disease, please, you are supposed to observe a period of one month, one month before you can be allowed to donate blood. 
All right, so um, people have general concerns about donating blood, the safety of the process. Um, people say, um, you, you know, we live in a part of the country where, you know, there's just people come up with stuff in terms of this kind of processes. What would you say to someone who is skeptical right now? He wants to, do, he or she wants to donate blood, but they are, they are sort of skeptical about how safe the process is and if they are safe too after donating blood. Yes, um, it, it, it's a very safe process for one to pass through. Blood donation is not something that's hidden. It's very transparent. The process is a well-defined um, uh, um, scientific process, and so there's no problem with blood donation. We, we, we had a TV program two days back, and somebody asked the question, like, they had concerns with the, the um, fetish um, dispositions of our people in Africa, so they were like, they are afraid they can't donate blood because if they donate blood, it could be used for fetish means. Some also even have misconceptions about their blood being used for, to be for sharp practices, like the sell those bloods and then the money goes to private pockets. But over the years, we have made it very clear that blood donation processes are transparent. It's for everybody to see. Blood donors get to see how uh, bloods are donated, the processes from the start to the finish. So it's not a hidden process, it's an open process. So uh, it's perfectly safe to donate blood. And Trust me, nobody is going to use your blood for any fetish thing or even um, sharp practices because we have checks and balances to make sure that this process is free, it is safe for anybody who wants to donate blood. And even after donating blood, we also make sure that we have a refreshment package for blood donors. That is to say, when somebody donates blood, after donating blood, they get to eat something at least to make them get some part of their vitality back so they don't go feeling faint-headed um, or weak or any of those um, predispositions after blood donation. And we hope that people turn up today and every other day to donate blood because this is a very, this is very critical. Um, we need more blood, blood, especially like you said, for um, emergency cases. Um, Health Coordinator, Definitely. Nigeria Red Cross Society, Delta State, Joseph Odua, thanks for talking to us. Thanks for having me.